Hello there again everybody, Boyd back with you. Well, as promised, we're going to be doing some paint work on the printed figure that we just got off of our GK2 in the last video update. And uh, we've got this great little Darth Vader figure here. Lots of detail on this figure. I'm really, uh, really liking the way it looks. So we're going to bring out a lot more of that detail by doing some nice painting on it. Um, I'm just going to be working with my airbrush. I'm going to be using a combination of airbrush and some hand painting here. And uh, we're going to start off by painting the... Uh, the, the bottom part of the base here, kind of the, the rim around the edge, do a little bit of detail work on that. I'm just using some uh, water-based craft acrylic in a pewter color. So I've got my airbrush all loaded up and ready to go. So let's get the uh, bottom of the base painted first here. Painting at about 15 PSI. This is cut about 50% with water. So we have to be a little bit careful. We can't put too heavy of a coat on here yet. So we'll just kind of work our way around. sure I get all the way around this got these little kind of scallop details that extend up to the upper part here all right so I'm liking the way that that looks you guys now after this dries a little bit I'll be coming back I'm going to be using uh, some of my um, brighter silver color here we're going to do these little kind of these are actually if you if you print this model at a larger scale you guys one of the features of this model is uh, these are supposed to be little LED projectors so if you print this at a bigger size what you can do is you can put some small little LEDs in there mount this on a little bit bigger base and have light to projects up onto the figure that which would look really awesome a little bit small to do you could probably do this if you really wanted to with some small SMDs or something but we're just going for a static model this time so I'm pretty happy with that um, we'll let this dry a little bit and then we'll come back and do a little bit of hand painting here on these little projectors we'll paint them a bright silver and then we're going to do a little bit of kind of gold on this uh, little bit of script work that goes around the edges here be right back with that back with you again everybody and it's time to add some more color onto our model here I'm going to be going around and doing these little details here around the edge of the base we've got this nice little script work going on there and a little detail around these projectors for that I'm going to be using this nice little antique gold color uh, folk art craft acrylic again. I just put a little bit in the cap here and I'm going to be using a really nice little fine tip brush and we'll just go in here and start doing this. Got my uh, magnifying glasses on so we can get nice and close here and uh, we'll add this little detail. I think that'll spruce it up pretty nice. Just getting my brush all nice and soaked in. Okay. That came out pretty much the way I was hoping it would. It looks great. The color kind of goes together very well. So we'll just start working on this little script here. Got to hold my brush nice and steady for that. Just highlighting over the upper edges of it, not trying to get it on there too thick, you guys. Alright, 
Last little bit of script here. Got a little bit on that lower section there. We'll get rid of that in just a second here. Again, this is water washable, so it's easy to clean up. Okay, that looks pretty nifty, you guys. So, I'll show you how we clean this up really quick. We're just going to take a Q-tip, and we've got a little bit of water here. Let's see what we found in that ad. It's right about in here. Just clean that off there a little bit. Okay, so now what we're going to do, you guys, is we're going to, um, again, let this dry for a couple minutes, and then I'm going to change over to some bright silver here. We're going to come back and uh, paint these little projector things a little bit brighter color, and I think I'm going to do these little crown pieces on the top of the, uh, the little part right there to kind of bring that up a little bit. All right, so I'll be right back with that. Okay, you guys, I've switched over paints again here. This time I'm just using some good old testers enamel. And um, it's a bright silver. I really like this for this kind of work. We're going to be just going over these little projectors here. And then we're going to go over these little crowns at the top part here, which I think will bring out the, the detail on those. Okay, so I've switched to a little bit broader of a brush here. And uh, we've got to be a little bit more careful because this, this paint is not uh, water soluble. So we can't uh, make too many mistakes. But here we go. And just like I was hoping, that brought that up real nice. Let's start getting some of these crowns done here. these neat little uh, kind of scallop details that look really cool. Yeah, that looks good. Just about finished. What I'm going to do next, you guys, while I'm at it here with this silver, I'm going to uh, do some of the details on, on the figure itself. There are some silver details on Darth's costume here that we need to uh, bring out. So hair stuck on there. Okay. 
Okay. All right. We're finished with that. So, get my uh, really fine tip brush here, and we've got these uh, little silver details on his chest plate and on the a um, little bit of his helmet here. I noticed that that little nose part of the helmet is silver, but it's a really tiny part, so I'm going to paint that now. Um, and if we get a little bit over, we can we can touch up around the edges with our black. Okay, so. That's my reasoning for doing the silver now. Forgot to mention, I just started off here with a with entire base coat on this whole thing, which is regular flat black. Same thing, acrylic craft paint. So let's uh, do some of this detail on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight some of these buttons here, you guys, and then we're going to uh, paint some of our Tamiya clear colors over those. And that will make those look really nice. Let's get his little uh, belt buckle here. Hopefully I'm in camera. Oh, let's tilt down a little bit. I keep trying to get closer to me. Okay. go for the nose. That's not too bad. It's got these little kind of little tips on his face there. And then we've got this panel. So let me go ahead and highlight these. Going over in a few spots, but that's all right. We're gonna come back and touch this up with some black. Let's see if there's anything that we're missing here. I don't think so. got these kind of bars that come down on the edge here too, I can remember. We're painting in super small detail here too guys, so you're probably going to wind up doing a little bit of touching up. Okay, so with there we got most of the um, the silver highlights done, now I'm happy with that. Um, I'm also, what I'm going to be doing here on his lightsaber, I'm going to be putting a coat of uh, white on this first. Then we'll spray over it with our Tamiya Clear Red, and that should give a nice kind of little inner glow to that. Hopefully that's the plan anyways. All right, so I'll be going back here. I'm going to make some black and uh, do my touch-ups, let this dry for just a little bit, and then uh, we're going to come back and start doing his lightsaber. We've got to paint this landscape here now, too, you guys. Now, what I want to do with that is, uh, from what I can remember a lot about the Star Wars movies, they were kind of like on these desert planets a lot. The rocks kind of look that kind of brownish sand color with a little bit of darker highlights. So I'm going to do that in a basic sand and then uh, we'll just kind of come in with some darkers like raw sienna and stuff like that just to highlight the little shadows and things and I think that'll look pretty nice. And then uh, I think what we're going to do is take a look at how everything goes from there and uh, we'll plan on the final parts of getting Darth painted here. we got to add some more detail onto this. Be right back. Back once more, everybody, and while we were away here, I just took my basic brush and uh, went around our, our rock area here and painted this a basic sand color. Um, and then I kind of touched up where it meets his feet and everything and got that all cleaned up. So we're looking pretty good. Now, this would probably um, fly pretty much the way it is. It looks pretty much like what I kind of was hoping it would look like with that, uh, you know, typical desert kind of scene that we saw a lot in Star Wars, but 
let's kick this up a little bit more. Um, kind of make it look like it's got some minerals and stuff like that in it. I'm going to use this uh, this really f fine grade rust powder that you can see. It's actually for putting rust on scale models, but I think that's going to look really good with our rock here and a couple of these little nooks and crannies and crevices and things like that. And we'll just brush a little bit of this on there. Now a little bit of this stuff goes a long ways. It's like super concentrated. So um, we don't want to go too crazy with it. I don't want to, you know, turn the rocks into 100% this, that color. I want to just, you know, bring out a little detail in it. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on that. Just back in these, some of these uh, little recessed areas and stuff like that, guys. I think it'll, it'll look pretty cool some on the edges and stuff like that. See if that's showing up for you guys on the camera. Yeah, you can see that. Okay, like I said, I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna overdo it, you guys. I just want it to be a little bit here and there. Get it to blend in really nice. On the bottom here. This is some really cool stuff to work with. It works awesome. It looks like very realistic rust if you do it on like metallic objects and things like that. I got a couple different colors of this stuff and I love it. It's so concentrated too, you barely needed to use any of it. It lasts forever. Okay, we got a little bit up there. Let's just go a little bit around here a little bit. Back up by his feet. And we'll work our way into the back. Looks a little bit powdery in some spots. You just go ahead and uh, after you finish here, you just kind of go back and just rub that in a little bit, and it'll blend right into it, flatten right out. Again, not going too crazy, guys. I don't want to turn my rocks into all that one color. I'm just, uh, I want a good mixture of both. I could use a little bit down in this little crevice right here. a little powdery. I'm just blending it in, you guys. And if uh, you want to make it blend in even more than that, what you can do is you can take a, put just a tiny little bit of water on your brush here and and uh, and do that. Okay, I think that looks pretty sharp, you guys. It 
may look a little bit more orange on the camera here, but uh, it looks really, really nice. We'll have some nice uh, still pictures of this for you at the end. All right, now what we're going to do, you guys, is we're going to um, load up the airbrush, and we're going to come with our transparent red now and paint the, uh, the red detail onto his lightsaber here and see how that looks right back. Okay, so we're ready to go with our red. I've got my little airbrush loaded up here, you guys, and I'm using Tamiya X27, which is their clear, transparent red, okay? Spraying again at about 15 PSI. Let's just go ahead and blow this on here. I've uh, put a little piece of tape on here so we don't uh, get any overspray on our black part of the model here. Might want to get a paper towel down below this part too so we don't get any on that. It's a delicate little figure here to work with you guys. And we'll get on, on the bottom side of it. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the glow that we got off of that, guys. That little white behind that made that look pretty nice. I'll go ahead and pull this piece of tape off here. Okay, yeah, that looks really good. Oh, I did get a little overspray on the cape part, no problem. We'll just touch that up. Okay, give you guys a nice look at that. That looks really good. Kind of with the white behind there, it's almost like an orangish red, which is what I wanted. All right, so one little last step we're gonna do here, you guys, is I'm going to um, I'm going to come back in with some really nice, uh, well, a couple things we're gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna come in with some really nice clear coat, uh, which we're gonna just brush off by hand. I'm using some automotive 2K clear. We're gonna do his helmet, his chest plate here, uh, the control box on his uh, kind of chest here, his utility belt, and his shin guards and boots. Uh, looking at Darth Vader from the pictures I have of him, uh, those those areas were all like a really nice high gloss, and plus he had the, the shiny uh, kind of lenses over the eyes on the mask. So that'll, uh, when we put that on there, that'll, that'll break it, you know, it'll make the black look different than the rest, which is sort of a flat. And then the last thing we're going to do, you guys, is we're going to come in here with our airbrush and do a you know, a, a white kind of light gray. We're just going to highlight a little bit on some of these wrinkles in the cape and uh, a little bit around his legs and things like that, maybe his hand, and uh, that will uh, bring out more of the detail. But this is looking great, you guys. So uh, let me get my uh, my gray mixed up. We'll go ahead and do that first. We'll do his cape, and then we'll finish up with his head. Okay, we're back again, everybody, ready to go with our highlighting details on his cape, some of the other spots on his body here. Uh, I've got my airbrush set up with my gray, and uh, I took the little nozzle protector off so we can get some really nice um, tight lines here. And again, I'm not going to go too crazy on this either, you guys. I don't want to turn the cape gray. I just want to highlight uh, some of the, uh, the raised details here. Okay, I'm going to start off a little bit of my hand get my feel for how much I want to come out. pressure is a little higher than I'd like it to be. Okay. Let's just highlight a little bit over his pants. His 
hand a little bit so you can kind of see that detail. Then we're just going to go inside the cape here a little. Definitely don't want to overdo it, you guys. That's very easy to do. Okay, so he looks really great. I'm going to, um, I might, yeah, let me get this little spot right here a little bit too. Got a little too strong right there, but I'll, um, I'll airbrush back over that with a little bit of black and that'll blend that right in. Okay, so that looks really good now. We've got everything sitting there. I'm going to go around and touch up any of my little black spots that I see need to be touched up. And then uh, we're going to come back after that by hand here and we're going to do our gloss on the uh, helmet, the head, the chest plate here, and uh, his shin protectors down there and his utility belt, I think. And that'll uh, get him pretty close to being wrapped up here, you guys. Be right back. All right, well, we're getting towards the end here, you guys, so I'm ready to go with my final clear coat here. Uh, this is some automotive 2K clear. Uh, you guys have seen me use this quite a bit here when I paint car models and stuff like that. I really love this stuff because it uh, dries with a super smooth gloss finish, and it's, uh, it's kind of thick, so it'll stay nice and smooth. It won't look like it's a... Uh, you can actually brush this on in some cases if you're doing small areas which is exactly what we're going to do here, and it won't have any brush marks in it or anything like that. And uh, it just looks really great, and it's a really durable, long-lasting finish. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off on the, uh, the bottom here, I think, and we're going to work our way up. So I'm going to do basically his, um, his shin guards and his feet down here. like in the movie when I was looking at it his boots were really shiny and uh, it's cool shin guards that he's got anywhere that I get off a little bit it's no problem I'll just um, go back and touch it up with a little bit of flat black Kind of hard to get to some of these spots. He's um, got a lot of detail around him. Let's get the other side of this boot. Okay. Let's see a little bit of the back side of his boot here. Got a little spot there to touch up on the on the cape I can see. Okay, now we're going to go for the uh, the utility belt. Just these boxes, they look like they were kind of glossy on the pictures. Alright, and then his chest plate. Okay, then now we're going to go up to the, uh, the upper part here. Kind of trying to stay away from those silver areas so I don't uh, smudge that.
but you can see how nice that looks you guys it's really smooth and really glossy this last little line right here okay okay that looks good now what we're going to do is helmet eyes, his whole face. Not worried at all guys, I'm putting it on a little bit thick, but that's perfectly fine. Sides here. Chin. His feet. Can't really see that one from over there, so we're not going to worry about that. Okay, I'm happy with that, you guys. Maybe just a little bit more in this eye socket right here. Ah, that's good. Okay. There's one little desk. last detail I did notice, you guys, that we need to do. We've got to paint on his little um, different colored lights on his chest and his little waistband right here. We got some blue and we got some green that needs to go on there. We're going to be using the Tamiya transparent color. So I'm going to let this clear dry for a little bit. And then uh, we'll come back and do that last little detail and show you the finished model. We are back once more for the finale, everybody. I've got the Darth Vader figure all finished up here. I went back around it and did a little bit of cleanup like I was talking about. I always like to take some up-close still pictures of my work so I can look at that on a big computer screen and see if I see any flaws or anything. And I saw a few spots here and there. So I went back and cleaned up a few things, but overall it turned out really nice, you guys. I'm really happy with the, the amount of detail we were able to get into this, being it's barely four inches tall. We got our, our rocks painted really nice there. I'm happy with the work we did on the base and everything. Got a lot of nice detail painted onto the figure itself. So pretty happy with it, you guys. And I couldn't be more pleased with this first print off of our uni Uniformation uh, GK2 machine. It worked out fantastic and... Uh, Going forward, I'm going to be uh, looking forward to doing a lot more printing with this. We'll just kind of turn them around a little bit and get you up close to some of the details here. Here's his, uh, the work we did on the chest plate and everything. We got the gloss on his helmet and got the lightsaber looking really nice. Our script work we did on the base and everything turned out really good. One of the things I noticed in the up-close pictures, um, we had a couple little spots of uh, support residue that was left over up on the cape up on his shoulder here and I went back and got rid of that and then I uh, blended back over my uh, shading with my flat black up on his cape here and got that looking a lot more subtle like I wanted it to so that came out really good love the uh, sculpt of this figure they did a fantastic job on this it just looks like it's got movement and everything the flowing cape looks really cool got his hand sticking out there using the force there's a Kind of a close-up look at his face and everything 
looks really, really good. There are some more of these uh, Star Wars figures over on uh, CGI Trader that I looked up that are free right now. There's a really nice Han Solo one and a couple more. So I'll probably be uh, downloading and printing a few more of these. But uh, all in all, I hope you guys enjoyed our little uh, print and paint series here with our new machine. Couldn't be happier with everything. And uh, I actually painted or printed up another figure that I'll show you really quick here at the end. Got Halloween coming up here pretty soon. So um, I always like to do something for that every year. So we'll just kind of end it right here and I'll show you that really quick and we'll call this video a wrap. I'll be right back with that, everybody. Well, here's the second figure that I printed up off of the Uniformation GK2. And uh, what would Halloween be without Michael Myers, right, you guys? So this is going to be a really fun one. I'm going to be uh, coming back just before Halloween and uh, finishing this one up, doing all the painting and everything. And we're going to add a little bit of lighting to this and all that. But this is another figure that I found on um, CGI Trader right now that's for free. And I think they did a great job on this one, too. Uh, the figure actually comes in several pieces, so I've already done a little bit of work to it. Uh, the, the right arm there, the hands, the head, uh, the figure is separate from the base, the pumpkin is separate. Uh, the pumpkin's really cool too because it's printed hollow so we can put a nice little LED in there, you know, a little flickering LED. Look at the beautiful wood texture on this print, you guys, on this uh, stairs or whatever. It looks really cool. So we'll bring out a little bit of weathering and everything on that. And uh, another thing I want to show you the great job that the printer did. Look at the fine detail how thin that is on the knife and everything it just came out absolutely perfect and uh, I think they did a fantastic job let me turn this a little bit on the likeness of Michael here especially the mask um, they've got him kind of you know a little bit more beat up uh, like he was towards the end of the series which I really like the extra detail brings out the character of the mask and everything the figure itself looks great and um We'll have some fun painting this one up as well. So let me just kind of show you the back side of him and everything here. He looks fantastic. And uh, I'd say this one's around nine inches tall or so. But uh, you can actually print this a little bit larger. I scaled it down, I think, to like 70% or something like that. But just really, really cool. And again, just a you know a little demonstration of the work that this GK2 printer can do. Really, really happy. And it's got a coat of primer on it, so... It's all ready for paint. It just looks fantastic. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed our little uh, Darth Vader paint up here. I'll be coming back um, in the next couple of days. I mentioned a while back that I printed up some really cool sci-fi uh, spaceships from a popular uh, series that was on during the 1980s. We'll kind of leave you guys guessing on that. We'll get to that here real soon. I've got those all printed up, and we're going to start working on those here on the channel. Back to the Enterprise refit project that I've been putting off for a while while I was working out some of my client work and got all caught up on that. So I'll be back to doing regular video updates here, you guys. So, all right, well, we'll see you next time. And until we do, take care and happy modeling, you guys.